Hello everyone! Today we are going to be making a beautiful molded inlay pumpkin using our rose chintz inlay. This pumpkin is going to be so much fun and you're going to learn so much along the way. These are the supplies that you are going to need. Your rose chintz paint inlay by IOD and you can there's a link of where to get them in the show notes if you don't have one the hello pumpkin and olive pressed mold air dry clay a chip or paintbrush cornstarch a soft small paintbrush a pumpkin of some sort either paper mache or foam or plastic and then if you want to, or rather you have to seal the pumpkin after the inlay. So you'll have some choices how you want to do that. Um, we'll talk about that at the end, but depending you'll want a spray poly and a clear wax. For decorative purposes on the pumpkin, we're bringing in dark wax and gold touches. Um, those are optional as well. I know that supplies can add up. So that's why I'm mentioning that. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our Hello Pumpkin mold and we are going to dust the leaf cavities. We're only using the leaves from this mold, um, so just dust those and then you're going to turn it over and kind of knock, gently knock out the excess cornstarch. And then once you do that, uh, oh, the reason why we do this, I should mention, is because it allows the clay to release easier. Then you're going to take your air dry clay and you're going to just press it into the leaf cavities. Once you get all the clay in, use your thumb to just kind of um, gently use that micro rim that our molds have and you can get rid of the excess clay. Once you have all of your clay in the leaf molds, then you can decast the molds and you just gently help them out of their cavity, just like so. If you lose a little stem of the leaf, no worries. You can just use a tiny toothpick to kind of get that out and once you glue everything down it's back together no problem easy peasy once you remove all of your leaf castings then it's going to be um, time to just kind of arrange them around the stem of your pumpkin and it's just kind of um, how you visually want your leaves to lay on the pumpkin you can use more leaves if you want to add more you can arrange them so that there's a cluster on one side really just have fun with it and get creative um, this is your pumpkin so you want to just really make it something that you like Once you get an arrangement of the leaves that you like, then you want to start to adhere them. We would normally use tight on quick and thick wood glue, but we didn't have any on hand, so we used a hot glue gun. I would recommend a wood glue. It's a little easier and it works great with our air dried clay. After we got the leaves all adhered around the stem, we realized that uh, we wanted to kind of cover the base of the stem and that's why we ended up bringing in the olive crest mold. So if you would like to do the same, you can use the olive crest mold and you just, the there's some beautiful just kind of um, architectural elements in this mold that we used to at the base of the stem to just kind of give it a nice classical feel where the stem meets the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. 
So you'll use the same method that you did with the leaves. You just dust it a little bit with the cornstarch just in the cavities that you're going to be using. Flip it over and knock out that extra cornstarch and then fill those cavities with your air dry clay. And then you'll take those moldings and just gently wrap it around the base of the stem however you would like. After you get those all done, it's time to set it aside and let it dry just enough to where you get um, a little bit of a crust on the outer layer of the mold. What that does is it allows you to paint without um, doing too much damage to the detail of the mold. We also use this very delicate chip brush for that reason. It just makes it so that you're not getting rid of all of that beautiful detail. And then you just give the entire pumpkin a coat of paint. We actually put on two coats to cover. It's going to really depend on your paint and your project, um, how many coats it takes you. So just make sure that you'll have a nice, complete coverage. You can't see anything through the paint and then set it aside and allow it to dry completely. Once you set aside your pumpkin and allow it to dry, while it's drying, gather your inlay sheets and just cut out some different arrangements and shapes and start playing with them and laying them on your pumpkin to see how you want them arranged. You just carefully cut on the actual sheet. You don't have to... Um, cut the protective sheet that comes with it, just the grid sheet, and just cut it in little clusters is what I would recommend so that you have different options as you start to lay them out on your pumpkin. Once you have all of the pieces cut that you want, lay them paint side down uh, on somewhere that is going to be safe for them and safe and dry. Grid side up, paint side down, and set those aside. Now you're going to take your pumpkin and you're going to paint another coat on it. Now this is where you want to just kind of be mindful. You can either paint half the pumpkin and lay half of the inlays in and then do the other half after, or you can do it all at once. It just depends on how quick you are. So if this is your first time using the inlays, maybe start with half the pumpkin. And you want a nice medium thick coat, not too sloppy, not too sparse. You definitely want to cover completely. The areas that don't have wet paint, keep in mind, the paint from the inlay will not take. Now fairly quickly, you're going to want to take your inlay pieces that you've set aside and again, they should be laid face down. After you have them arranged paint side down, grid side up, you're going to give them a, a misting and you'll want to give them a fairly decent misting because the water is going to activate that paint. You don't want to see any puttering, uh, but you definitely want to make sure that the whole thing is covered with the misted water. And then you're going to start arranging the inlay again, paint side down, grid side on the outside, and lay that into the wet paint on the pumpkin. And if you've played with it, First, you kind of know where you want your pieces and you can lay it out in that same arrangement. Mm -hmm. 
while those inlays are drying, if you would like to wax your pumpkin, this is a time that you can wax the molds. Just be very, very gentle if they're still um, moist at all. We used a clear wax so that we could come in later and do a dark wax and really pop that detail. The reason we use a clear wax first is it just allows you to spread the dark wax without it really soaking into the chalk type paint. It gives it uh, just uh, the ability to kind of move around better. So we're doing a clear wax on just the leaves only. We're not going down into the pumpkin because the inlays are still on it. We will do that after. After the clear wax is all completely into the molds, then we come back with the dark wax and we lightly, gently work that um, in. So we're just kind of buffing out the clear wax here and we've got our dark wax ready. And then we just dip the brush in, just grab a little bit. Um, if you want to use your chip brush that you already have, you can. And then you just work that dark wax into the molds, being careful to, again, not disturb the detail of the mold, but also to get into the cracks and crevices because that's what's really going to pop that detail um, out when you are finished buffing out the highlight. Okay, now that we've covered and we've got all the dark wax on, now we're gonna come in with a shop, as a um, blue shop cloth we like to have on hand. And we're going to just buff out the dark wax and really pop those highlights of the mold. And here you can see here, how beautiful are these leaves around the pumpkin? I just love how those came out. Now the step where we remove the inlays. We've already moistened the back. I apologize, we forgot to turn the camera on to show you that, um, but we took a wet cloth and moistened the back of the inlays and we have removed all but this last piece and we wanted to show you this. So as we remove it, you can see all of that beautiful hand painted detail that the inlay leaves. It is definitely the star of this project. All right, the final touch we want to do is to use a gold craft paint. Um, you can find this at, um, sometimes your stockists may carry it, so check with them first. But if not, any craft supply store will have it. And this is optional. You don't have to do this. You also don't have to use the dark wax for that matter. And then, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to do clear wax, you can also do just a spray coat of poly. Uh, water-based poly will work and you can seal it after you put the inlays on. So there is any number of ways that you can approach it. But that's it you guys. This is our beautiful pumpkin molded inlay pumpkin. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.